What is up everybody? Welcome back to the homestead and uh, thank you for joining us on the channel. It's another like perfect fall morning out here in Idaho. We're working on some electrical this morning. It's kind of a uh, interesting little project. I need to ground the water heater. So the water heater hasn't been grounded like properly, I guess. And this is a huge water heater. I'll have to check out the kilowatts on it in here. Um, but it's one of those on-demand hot water heaters. So we need to get that grounded and we actually need to get the panel grounded. It doesn't totally need to be grounded, I don't think, but we're just gonna add one more grounding rod to it just to be safe. So let's start inside here and we'll get all that going. Man, like clutch move on my part. I didn't record like the last 10 minutes or everything, but we got the cover off the hot water heater. This is the hot water heater back here. And it is like, you know, out there in all its glory, it just does its little heating thing somehow. This has got some serious power coming into it, guys. This is four 40 amp breakers feeding this thing with eight gauge wire. So that is like some serious electricity moving to this thing. And we're looking for four eight gauge grounding wires coming out of it, I guess, um, piece of ground wire. So what I'm going to do is add a grounding rod specifically for the water heater doing two things. One, grounding the water heater right here. And two, it just gives me another grounding point, makes everything a little bit safer. So we're gonna come out of this grounding point with two four gauge wires. And that's gonna go right outside and connect to an eight foot grounding rod that we're gonna go pound out there. I already have a hole drilled down here. We popped a half inch hole through the, the metal right there. So we're gonna hope that we can fit two four gauge wires through that half inch hole. But let's head out there right now and see where that hole came out. And we're going to dig a little bit with these uh, post hole diggers, pound that rod in and clamp it all up. All right, so there it is right there. So we are going to dig a little hole right in the ground there and pound that grounding rod in think that's an eight footer copper jet approves so let's get to it okay fence post pounder in hand let's see if we can do this here Run that wire out, I guess. I don't know if I can fit these in two of them. I might have to split it up and, you know, go two to four. Let's see here. I think copper is pretty expensive nowadays. Found out. Pretty proud of it. That's not gonna fit in there. So we'll split that up. How many strands do we got? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, unfortunately. So hopefully we'll do four and three. Hopefully that's enough. Let's see, then we're gonna go outside and cut that. Man, we might not have enough. Come out. Down. Gotta 
cut it like right there. Grab a clamp, get that hooked up. We got these ground clamps. Let's go inside and see if that second one is long enough. Here, man, it's gonna be close, guys. Oh, yeah, we got it, we got it for sure. Right on, that's what I was planning. Head brush. Let's get those clamps tightened outside. Okay, so those are tight. Now, let's go back inside and see if it works. Okay, I'm gonna leave you guys here. We got the cover back on it. I'm gonna run over to the faucet over by the bathroom. As Soon as I turn the water on, Starts flowing, should kick lights on right there. Helps if you turn the breakers on. Try that again, water on. Yeah, there we go. Cool. All right, guys, this is where I need your guys' help. I know there's a lot of times when, like, you'll comment suggestions on a video, but a lot of you guys see that it's already too late. By the time that that comment is seen, you know, that project is either, either completed or we're past that point in the project. So this time I'm going to wait for your guys' input on this because I really want to see what's going on and see what you guys have to say about it. So here's the gist. We have our panel right here inside the house. Show you how this is all hooked up. So you can see the wires that feed all the house. And then if we step right outside this door here, you can see I have my service coming into the house. And now I have service wire that I buried and I installed trenched in and it's running underneath us right now as we're walking all the way over here. And this is probably, oh, I don't know, I would say 60 feet of of like run of over here to this box and then i'll flip this camera around for you guys and then we have the service wire coming up into this box and i have a 200 amp breaker right there that feeds the house you can see i got this breaker here this is the whole little setup and that wire runs all the way up into there and connects to our transformer way up in there so at this box right here at my meter, I have wire coming down and I have two grounding rods. You know, it was per code. Um, I think they're both like eight feet long. They had to be spread like six feet apart. Wire, copper wire running through the two and grounded to this panel right here in the grounding, you know, port inside the panel. So I have that grounded right there. And I also have the ground wire hooked up. So this service wire that I ran from that breaker is, you know, connected to the ground and it's ran 
all the way under all the way to the house. So there's four wires running from this panel to the house. There's, you know, your two hots, your neutral and the ground. So we got a ground running all the way over here and it connects inside the box. You can see where I have my stub up right there and I have it grounded inside the box there. So my question to you guys is do I need another grounding rod right here, right here outside the main panel to the house? And if I do need a grounding rod in there, what do I do with the bonding screw that's inside the panel? Because I don't know if that should be bonded or not bonded. So that's where I want your guys' help. I want to know if I need this grounded at the house, if you guys think I need this grounded at the house, and I want to know if it is grounded at the house, whether or not it needs that bonding screw bonded to the neutral, I think it is, inside the panel, right inside this door here. So let me know in the comments below. I really appreciate it. It's going to be one of those things where I'll put a video up afterwards to show you guys, you know, what I did that I actually am taking you guys' input on stuff like this because it's just super interesting to see what people have to say out there and, you know, what they did on their projects. So let me know down below. I appreciate it, guys. And then other than just a little bit of silicone right here on these wires, that pretty much wraps up this little project until I see what you guys have to say on that ground wire for the main service panel. I'm really interested to see that. Please let me know what you're thinking. Hopefully this water heater does a little bit better. The only reason I wanted to ground it a little better is A, it needed to. It's a lot of juice going into that. And B, you could kind of hear a buzz coming from it every now and again. You know, you'd turn the hot water heater on and you would hear almost like an electricity buzz coming through it. So I wanted to make sure that was good and grounded and all taken care of. You know, it's pretty amazing that that thing can heat up that cold of water that fast. Um, obviously, it's not instant at the tap. You do have to wait for the tap to bleed that line. But for the most part, it's right there for you. Appreciate you guys watching this video. If you haven't already, it sure does help us if you consider subscribing down below. If you enjoyed it, give it a thumbs up. Can't wait to hear from you guys. We'll see you next time.